So welcome back to Worthington Model Railway and uh, I'm sort of crouching down here to get in camera view but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put static grass on uh, this uh, area here and I'm using my trusty homemade static applicator. Um, I'll post a link to the video where you show, I show you how I put this together. Uh, it's way, way better than the commercial ones. I'm gonna buy my static grass in these bulk packets. Um, Woodland Scenics is what I'm using. What I'm doing is I'm going to take a mixture of 2mm and 4mm in different colors. So I put some of this uh, dark green 2mm in there. And now I'm going to add some uh, light green 2mm into the hopper. And I'm going to mix this around. Now there's lots of different techniques for doing static grass. Some people like to layer the grass. I'm a bit of a lazy I suppose. I tend to sort of layer it in the hopper and uh, so here I've got some four millimeter in a medium green so we'll add some of this in here too and then I'll have my my hopper full of the grass and as I say this is a it doesn't look wonderful but uh, this is an applicator that I, I put together for well, probably less than $20, $20 total. Parts came from all over the place. Um, but it works really well. It actually works much, much better than my commercial applicators. Okay, so I'm now going to mix all this up. So I'm going to mix the different colors in different lengths in here. And the hopper's pretty full. And we'll put the top on the hopper, screw it down. Now, interestingly, um, you'll know uh, if you look at the video when I made this, um, I don't have the power going to the screen. I have the power going to a big metal washer in the back of the hopper. And I think that gives us a much better result. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do when I'm doing static grass, I don't like to use white glue. I like to use Mod Podge. So I'm going to mix up uh, washing up liquid, water, and Mod Podge. I'm going to throw the Mod Podge on the top here and apply the static grass. So I'll be back in a second. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I've got this mixture of uh, Mod Podge, water, and washing up liquid. I'm just going to sort of scatter this across the area here. And I want it to Now I'm going to turn on my applicator. As you see, you get a spark here. We should get a spark there. As that touches, yeah, we're getting a spark. And I'm getting a spark. Okay, I'm getting a spark now. Yo! So now we just touch this in and we start to have the grass. I think you see as we put the grass on here. You'll see it start to stand up. Now this is a sort of slightly better technique, it's just a tap the, the hopper so the grass comes out. And you'll see it's definitely starting to, 
stand up here so the static charge comes through. You can see that, but the grass is now starting to stand up much more as we get to static. So this is two millimeter and a four millimeter grass, so it's not really long. Use the same technique. On the hillside here, um, make sure we got plenty of this Mod Podge stuff sitting on here. So as we apply it, it'll stick. But uh, pretty much exactly the same thing. Just sort of throw it at the hillside, and it sticks on the glue and stays. Um, might take a couple of applications to get enough of this on there for it to properly cover, but. As you can see, it's basically the same technique. I need uh, more grass in my hopper. Hang on. And I think there you can see the result. Um, I might just want to manually add a little the bottom there where it's not as heavily covered and it's honestly working very well. well I think I'm gonna have to come back and kind of go over that again so even though this static grass does look good um, it does take time I've been at it uh, about two and a half hours and uh, as I zoom out, you'll see how much I got done. So basically, I get this area done and half of the hillside over there done. Uh, the hillside does look very good, actually. It looks way better um, than it did. Now it's got the grass on it. Um, Still more to do yet, and probably going to go over this with some a few spots. We'll put some um, additional grass in later once this is dried. Um, also need to vacuum up some of the excess grass, particularly on the bushes at the bottom of the hillside. So we'll uh, use a little vacuum to do that at some point. But uh, going to just keep going with this at this point. Uh, I'm about done for the night uh, tonight, but uh, I will keep going it. Um, not necessarily going to show you as I'm doing it. I think you've seen the techniques and then I will just show you it when it's completed. Okay. So in terms of doing something different here, um, before I put static grass over here, I decided I'm going to put a bit of a marsh in. Um, I bought this, which is a Seanscapes tufted grass mat. It's been sitting around. I haven't used it. I don't really want to use the whole thing but what I'm gonna do is sort of it's a bit like that grassy mat stuff that I used before so I'm just gonna take some pieces of it and I'm gonna sort of put it along the track side here and try to make what is gonna look like a bit of a marshy area by pulling these tufts out and randomizing them a little bit. I'm break them up a bit. And stick these down on here and hoping this is going to give me something that's going to look Kind of marshy along the track side here. Oh, so put some glue down. We'll, we'll glue these in place. And, uh, let's 
see how this looks. Um, this that is now going to leave me huh, a piece here of something I can maybe use somewhere else. But let's uh, glue these down and see how it looks. What I'm going to do here is just pour some Mod Podge on here. And we'll get a brush. Brush it around a bit. <coughs> I have a brush I was using to paint the hillside. It's got a little bit of brown paint on it, but I'm not too concerned about the brown paint. I'll just sort of try to get this much podge across here. Take the pieces of this. Have to come down. Let me take the camera off, and I can show you it better. I put some light on and so hopefully you can see that that actually kind of works nicely. It, it does look like a, a marshy area. We'll wait till it dries up and then I'll put some static grass around the edges and I think it'll look pretty good. Now, as you can see I uh, painted and put a uh, scatter down on this old whole area here in front of the tunnel mouth. Uh, still need to do some more work here. Uh, we've got to put something along there where there's a between the upper and lower levels. I think it's looking pretty good and here we have the cattle dock. And, uh, that's going to sit in there quite nicely. So uh, pretty pleased with that progress. So for this area I'm going to put up a stone wall and doing a slightly different technique here so you can see that I've put some uh, some foam board up and uh, used some staples to hold it to the baseboard and then I'm going to cut some pieces of this is basically it's a mold that I have and I'm going to cut, cut pieces of the mold and you'll see I'll put the wall along here. Don't worry too much about the cracks in the wall. We'll deal with that later. So, so what I'm doing is putting some of this uh, liquid nails cement on here. And then hopefully this will just stick. To the wall. And obviously uh, in this area here. I just use more of the plaster cloth to, from the end to continue that along. We'll paint that and uh, we'll also paint this wall as we go. Let me get the next section. You can see I added some more pieces in. I don't worry too much about these cracks for two reasons. One, because they're going to be natural cracks in walls. And secondly, we'll put some, uh, we'll put some foliage on there to sort of hide the joins and the cracks so you won't notice them as we build through. And, Put some foliage in front of things like this on the bottom so you won't really see that as we build this up. This is how I cast the walls. Um, I got this uh, mold at a tra train fair, oh I don't know, 20 years ago. And it's just plaster Paris in the mold. Um, let's try to get it out and then I'll show you how I make another one. You notice I didn't use the whole mold because these walls I'm making don't need to be that big. So. Um, I just cut them uh, with a craft knife uh, to the right size. So basically to get this out, you just very carefully peel the back of the mold off. And hope it doesn't crack or break. If it's dry enough, it shouldn't do, but sometimes it just crack. So, and you can see, you just peel it off and uh, here we have the wall ready to use. Oh, uh, let's make another one. 
I'll go mix up some pasta. When I'm mixing up this plaster, you want it runny enough to be able to go into the mold, but uh, you want it thick enough that it's not going to take hours to dry. Um, this is sort of like slightly runny ice cream is the best way that I can describe it. And all I do is I just uh, spoon it on and kind of kind of flatten it down. Uh, let me go ahead and do this, and I'll show you. When I'm all done, trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time is not the easiest thing in the world, but you need to get it into the corners and get it sort of flattened down at the edge of the spoon. So this time I made up a full mold because I have enough of the wall, but I've got extra plaster I want to use up. So um, what I do, once I get the stuff in there, basically bang this, trying to get out any air bubbles that might be in there, and you'll see that it, it's nice and flat on the back as I do that. There's a corner there that not perfect. Let's get some more plaster in that corner. And just uh, bang that corner a bit. Okay, now uh, I got plaster left over. I have a whole series of uh, rubber molds, and so what I do is I just take the leftover plaster and create little rocks with them, and we'll we'll look at those rocks in a minute. So I have the leftover plaster in the rock molds. You don't have to be sort of perfect with this, and in fact, I don't like to be perfect because I want the rocks to look a little bit different every time. And so, uh, you know, making them not quite full and moving them around a bit uh, gives us lots of different variation on the rocks. So, I'm gonna leave this stuff to dry, and uh, we'll see the end result. Anyway, I, I am just using this cheap plaster of Paris. Um, I've tried the expensive ones, I've tried the cheap one, and you know what, they both work just as well as each other, and I just don't see the point in uh, buying the expensive Woodland Scenic stuff when I can buy this for like five bucks a box. So, that's what I'm using. So here you can see the rocks. Um, I just throw them into a wash and uh, then I sort of dab a little bit of that orangey yellow paint on top of them and so they end up looking uh, pretty realistic in terms of the rocks. Um, it's a fairly easy technique and uh, doesn't take much to do it. These are the finished cast stones after uh, I put a wash on them. Basically it's a, a browny gray wash and then I added a little bit more brown to them to uh, Give them some of that yellowy color. Uh, if I zoom in here, you can probably see that. So uh, now I have some rocks ready to go in a few places. So we'll end up putting a few of these out there. I got the plaster cast wall stuck up, and you'll see I'm going to use exactly the same technique uh, that I used on the tunnel mouths. So I'm starting with that gray primer. And then I'm going to dab the other colors on with dry brushing. And then eventually we'll put some of this uh, foliage down. And the foliage will mask where the uh, sections of cast stone go together. And also some of those cracks. But as you can see now I put the paint on. The cracks don't look quite as bad. Um, that one there. You know... It's not too, too bad, and walls do crack, so, I mean, it, it can look prototypical. So let me get on and uh, start to put some color paint on this, and we'll come back as we go. Same way, I just uh, dry brushed on some green paint, and now I have the, uh, the brown, yellow, and gold here that I did before. I'm going to sort of mix those up, and uh, again... Just get that a little bit and dry brush some of that on it and then we'll put the black wash over and the walls should look very similar to the uh, to the ones already there. You'll notice that I don't fully mix these paints so as the brush goes in it picks up the different pieces of color and kind of blends them together. So there you can see in the last stage and we'll put the black wash over it like we did on the others and it will just blend the whole thing in together. And then we've got to put the foliage in to sort of hide all the imperfections and what have you. You can see the difference on the left is before I put the wash on, and on the right is after I put the wash. 
And uh, as I put the wash on, I just basically tiny amount on the brush and then spread it out fairly quickly. Get it into the nooks and crannies. And if there's any bits of white showing through, I try to, to get it into there too. Although you really won't notice that too, too much when it's all done. Okay. So to finish this off in uh, much the same way I did the others, I uh, put some more clump foliage here in three different colors. So I get uh, light green, I get dark green, and I get medium green. So we'll uh, just do the same thing we did before with this, which is to put some on the glue. And then uh, we'll come back with diluted PVA glue and washing up liquid to set it up. Okay, I'll keep going with this and show you when I'm done. So now I'm going to put these two pieces up in the corner by that other tunnel. So I'm just uh, got some liquid nails on some more of these little blocks of stuff, and hopefully, um, if I can get over here ah, without knocking the camera over, I'll just set these in here. And again, uh, when I get some more of of this stuff, I'll hide the gaps. But uh, right now I'm waiting more of those sheets to come and that'll be the same thing that we use along here to uh, hide the gaps too right now that's where those are going so, uh, so I'm almost out of this seamscape grass mat I do have some more on order but I thought I could just do a couple of little bits here to kind of show you how it works and uh, how it covers up the a multitude of sins in terms of the way we have stuff done here. So as you see, once I get uh, another couple of boxes of these, which I should have in a couple of days, we can get this finished. You can see once the rocks are placed, they uh, they do look pretty nice. Um, again, I need to put a few a few bits of. Uh, of grass around the, the and foliage around them so they, they look like they're coming out of the ground. Um, we'll do that a little so later. So I think you can see this area really is coming along nicely. Um, as I say I need some more of that uh, grass mat which should be here Tuesday. It's Sunday today and uh, that will allow me to finish this off and I think it's uh, it's going to look pretty good. Um, I did just paint that little area that I did there. Need to put some scatter and some static grass on that. Um, if we just sort of come out a little wider, you can see the other features on here. I put a, um, foot, ah, what am I trying to say, a level crossing in there. And uh, I also put this, my uh, cattle dock in place. That was pretty much where it was gonna be. And uh, there's the uh, stone wall. I didn't order quite enough stone wall. I gotta go order four more pieces. Um, I don't know how I managed to not work that one out right. I, I miscalculated somewhere. So uh, definitely uh, some good progress here. So uh, there will be another episode soon. If you got this far, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying what I'm trying to do here with this landscaping. Uh, certainly I'm having fun. Uh, as always, please like if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't. Subscribe button to the top right. Another video to the top left.